Поэтому без фактора музыка не перевел мать из носа и не намекал из этого цвета и прочего музыкальчика. Очень много задачи. Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those who have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. 
Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put death, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy, and my burden light. 
the Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel, um, uh, probably in the life of, of a priest, this is one of the most recited Gospels, at least in my experience, because it's, um, it's in the ritual for visits to the sick and administering Holy Communion to the sick. It's also in the uh, ritual for um, funerals. And um, uh, it's, I think, obviously, you know, the tone and the, the words our Lord uses give great sort of soothing um, comfort to us. But there is a deeper meaning that even gives us greater uh, soothing and comfort. Uh, and that is that, first of all, in the first reading, the prophecy of Zechariah, um, he uses certain words um, that, that are very, very important. And, and one in particular, the word meek. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior, savior is he, meek, and riding on an ass, on a colt, the pole of an ass. And um, this, this uh, word is used explicitly by our Lord uh, here in this gospel passage. For I am meek and humble of heart. For I am meek and humble of heart. Um, and so, in one way, he is revealing himself as the one who is prophesied and foretold. Um, and then, but even before that, in this gospel passage, he's identifying himself as divine. Um, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the, son, the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. He's talking about a, a deep co-penetrating knowledge, a kind of knowledge that isn't gained by uh, sense perception, uh, and that others don't have ac access to, only the Lord himself. Um, and so this is uh, a, a very, very important aspect. And these things really are significant because all this reveals to us that just as was foretold, uh, as reported in the Gospel of Luke, his name shall be Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Um, and, uh, but he's calling us to find our consolation in him, not, not merely in, in the way of a superficial kind of thing of, of nice words, you know, looking, there's, there's an industry in that, those hallmark greeting cards and so forth that, uh, you know, have things that stir our sentiments. And that's not a bad thing, it's just, it, it, it levels off them. And uh, it only goes, you know, so, so deep. But our Lord uh, comes to us with something that is uh, thoroughgoing, that is penetrating to the core of our being. And St. Paul is talking about this in this discussion about uh, whether we are in the flesh or in the spirit and uh, having this life in the spirit. And he is saying, um, for if you, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. He's talking about a, a kind of a mortification. We are a union of body and soul. We have to do bodily activities. We are in a world in time and space. Uh, and that's all a part of God's plan for us, our, our life. That we are to have uh, a bodily life. And even in the creed, we profess that we believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. So these are essential things that are that are that St. Paul is not trying to cancel out. St. Paul is affirming the bodily life, but it was, it it obtains its meaning 
and his death and its fulfillment in the life in the spirit. And what is the life in the spirit? It is sharing in communion with God. It is the life of sanctifying grace. And so our Lord is calling us and telling us He can admit us to sanctifying grace. He can admit us to share the life of God by participation that we are admitted to share in the life of God. And this happens through grace. It's by God's initiative. We cannot earn it, but in His benevolence, He offers it. And He doesn't offer it to just a few. He offers it to all. But then there are um, the, these words that are, are very, very important. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. What is the yoke he's talking about? He's talking about the cross. Uh, St. Paul is talking about mortification. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Um, and so, of course, we, we know, uh, hopefully we know, and hopefully we have some sense of understanding about how difficult and how painful it was for the Lord to carry the cross. And what uh, great generosity he demonstrated and dedicated love he de demonstrated by taking that cross. But he says to us, unless you take up your cross daily and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. St. Augustine uh, wrote about this and he talks about how you know, sometimes we, we want things taken off of us. We don't want mortification. We don't want penances. We don't want to carry burdens and so forth. And we think that somehow this will make life better. That it will be lighter and easier. And in some sense, that's true. But it's a very short-sighted kind of thing. Augustine says that, uh, take, for example, a bird. Cut off its wings. You'll make it lighter. But you don't help it to soar any higher, if anything. What you end up doing is um, grounding it on earth and preventing it from being able to do what it was created to do. So um, I think this is very important for us that, that and it goes, it, it then really reconnects with what our Lord says here at the very beginning. Uh, in his first paragraph, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Wise and learned did not put their faith in him because they thought they knew it all. They rejected him. They were not docile to the Holy Spirit. They, they were not receptive. They didn't know their need. They were arrogant, and they were insolent in their pride. And thus, if they would only have been willing to accept the cross, it would have enabled them to soar. But instead, they cut off their wings to be condemned uh, to not being able to soar into the precincts of heaven and the life of grace. These are important things. You know, so much of our world is so concerned with worldly things, and understandably, there are a lot of things we have to be concerned about, and, and that's part of being responsible. I made a video that I, I put out on Facebook today as a greeting and sort of a, um, a, a, a message on Independence Day, you can you can go to Facebook and look at it. I guess the staff will probably put it on uh, YouTube as well. But but um, yeah, there are a lot of very concerning things going on in the world. But it's important that we put all of that into perspective and a supernatural outlook 
and realize that all these things are passing away. All these things are passing away. The coronavirus will pass away. The masks will pass away. The social distancing will pass away. All the effort to go to sanitize the church will pass away. All those things. All the threats and the, the turmoil in society and the world. Uh, the perils that are facing us in our country and so many other places. All these things will pass away. And the way that we deal with it now makes a difference. It'll either make for our sanctification or our damnation. And we have to look to Jesus Christ. We have to learn to come to Him. Yes, we struggle. We're laboring. We're laboring. We're burdened. We're looking for respite. And Jesus will give us that respite. But we have to take his yoke upon us and learn from him. We have to submit ourselves to the loving discipline of God who wants to purify us and strengthen us and mature us in the life of faith and in the life of grace. And we have to learn the meekness and humility of heart with which then Jesus will enable us to find his rest and the flourishing of life for which he gave his life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We embrace the gentle yoke of the Lord Jesus. And as we serve him, we bring our prayers to the Father through him. That the church and her leaders may effectively call all who are burdened to come to Christ, in whom they will find true rest, we pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them and for the governments and the people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all who find life burdensome because of pregnancy, uh, uh, of a pregnancy they feel they cannot handle, that they embrace Jesus Christ and know his strength. We pray to the Lord. For all who are facing difficult decisions, that the Holy Spirit may give them wisdom and courage. We pray to the Lord. That the sick may be consoled and healed according to God's will. We pray to the Lord. That the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead bring the souls in purgatory to behold the beatific vision. We pray to the Lord. Father, as you answer our prayers, grant that we may always reject evil and live with the peace that comes from following your word. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. O Lord, be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Pleni sunt ceni et terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and David, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, 
to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, we proclaim your Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, 
a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Et il sumat cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitati Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Last of us call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please recite the communion antiphon. Come to me, all who are lab who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Friends, we're, all, we're very excited about the progress on our landscaping, landscaping project here on the church grounds. Put your roots down in Annunciation. On Saturday, July 11th, that's a week from today, after the 8 a.m. Mass, uh, well, you're encouraged to come to Mass. Whenever we have something on a Saturday morning, everybody should come to Mass. Um, please join us for Planting Day. Uh, also, please see the parish website for legacy opportunities to sponsor and put your name or that of those you'd like to honor or remember on one or more of the many plants available. Thank you to the many volunteers who are helping prepare the grounds for planting. Uh, even without the plants, the grounds look so much better already. So um, it, I can only imagine how wonderful it's going to be when we get our plants in. Uh, the Holy League Holy Hour for Men is Wednesday, July 8th at 5.30 a.m. There will be an hour of Eucharistic Adoration and Confession, followed by Mass at 6.30. Ladies are asked to wait until 6.15 uh, before entering the church. Our next uh, two Sunday, uh, our next second Sunday Vespers, which is evening prayer and the liturgy of the hours, will be uh, Sunday, July 12th at 7 p.m. Please invite your family and friends uh, to come. And you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, and uh, view last month's chanted extraordinary form vespers. I think they they um, posted the the link. Uh, they they sent it out in the email, you know, the e-blast that we send out on a regular basis, and and uh, I think it's probably on the website, our parish website as well. So um, also uh, we we ran out of holy water bottles last week. There was such a strong response to the offer. Uh, for people to be able to uh, uh, purchase a bottle and use it to take uh, exercise and blessed holy water home with them. Um, uh, we also had a very, very strong response to uh, bringing salt and then after Mass I exercised and blessed the salt. So I think I'm going to make that a regular monthly occurrence uh, in the future uh, uh, for the blessing of these sacramentals as well as uh, the blessing of rosaries and other religious articles and so forth. So, um, uh, at any rate, uh, very, very worthwhile. And, but we do have more bottles, so they're there on the table. There's a basket next to the uh, stainless steel canister over by, by the baptistry where you can obtain uh, holy water uh, for use in your home and for spiritual strengthening and protection. Um, once I've been part of the final blessing and dismissal, I'll come down to the foot of the altar and then lead you in prayers, um, especially the, the prayer to St. Michael and, and the prayer in time of the epidemic. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Say, Michael, the archangel, and defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O glorious Prince, St. Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Host, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Rebel Spirits, Servant in the House of the Divine King, and our Admirable Conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil. We turn to you with confidence, and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Father, I have added myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you do, I 
Thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. In your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself. To surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with balanced confidence. For you are my Father. Vouchsafe to hear us, O God, our only salvation, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God and ever Virgin, of thy blessed martyr Sebastian, and of all the saints. Deliver thy people from the terrors of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. Be moved to pity, O Lord, at our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul, so that experiencing thy forgiveness we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech thee, O Lord, grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee, and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal hearts may recognize that these scourges proceed from thine indignation and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So faith Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce, Et Spes Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamus, Ex Ule Spirii Herfe, A Te Suspiramus, Gementes et flentes in hac lacrimarum valde. Eha ergo, avocata nostra, hilos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Yeah, we would appreciate it much if, if everyone would help sanitize the church. Also, we have a basket here at the table to accept uh, contributions. <laughs> 